What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of How to Airbrush. And today we got your. Today we got a quick lesson on just some basic shapes. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, you know, shading. How do you get good at shading? And like, how do you figure it out? So today we're gonna take a little exercise on some shapes. We're gonna shade them in. We're gonna color them in. And yeah. But before we get to get all that, we're gonna just go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors. So obviously to Createx uh, for providing the paint for today's video, they've been super awesome. And we got their new line of Createx Wicked Opaque paints, um, which we'll be using for some projects here coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Um, also Spray Gunner uh, for providing the links for today's and all of our videos. So if you go down below this video, you'll see some links. Uh, including the link for this image that we'll be using today so you could do this exercise at home on your own in your own free time um, and get better you know over you know with yourself over there um, so yeah go ahead and check out all those links down below get yourself something nice using those links helps the channel provide you more videos like this as always if you want to participate in the chat <laughs> uh, Joining the Skull Squad um, grants you access to the live chat as well as we have different tiers. So at certain tiers, you get access to the backlog of videos, early access, and yeah, clicking that join button down below will get you all the information that you need to know about that. We appreciate all the support. Dang, I'm good at that. Look, look, look so many words in so little time. I'm good. Anyway, um, let's get started with today's exercise. So obviously here we have our shapes, right? So I've made it pretty easy. I've tried to make it pretty easy. Um, and uh, the image down below is these four shapes. They're already shaded in and everything. And all I've done is just cut around the edges and cut them out. We're working on a heavy uh, watercolor, 140 grams per square inch or 300 grams per meter squared. Uh, watercolor type paper it's heavyweight paper um, it handles paint really good and uh, it's really good for like practicing um, even if you're planning to paint on automotive and all that stuff painting on this is a uh, pretty equivalent to most of that and yeah pretty inexpensive for practicing um, so all I've done is printed out the paper and then used a little bit of spray adhesive uh, to stick it onto here and again you'll find a link for all this stuff down below so if you're interested in trying this um, you're more than welcome to help yourself to that so again i've just go ahead and cut them out and we're going to kind of do this in steps and we're going to do them all together at once um, that way we can kind of be the most efficient about it um, if you want to print yourself out two sets right so like i have another set here so i can see um, kind of the shading that I'm going to be going for even after I'm painting and have some paint already in the way I'll be able to see you know, so what's up Heather? What's up the go kid? Right on. Yeah, that watercolor paper is great for practicing on it's a great paper I mean, like I said you can get that whole stack. I think it's it's like uh, I don't even remember how much I think it was like ten dollars Might even be less um, for that whole it's like 30 sheets um, so it's a really good value. Um, what's up, go kid? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, you know, if you need help with shading, this is what we're doing. So um, obviously with the circle, we're gonna just go ahead and just peel the circle off, um, the whole circle. And this is probably gonna be the, out of all of these shapes, this is gonna be the one. Um, uh, oh wait, before we peel it off, so that you have a good reference, Right, maybe take a pen or a pencil or something, or even if you want to take your airbrush, but mark off which side is the top, right? So like, just give yourself a marking right here. That's the top. That way you know the way your shading goes. Um, and, and while you're working, it helps to just maybe just put it like beside it, you know, just, just keep it right here just so you know you can see it. Or like if you have a separate piece, or if you have it on your phone, again, it just helps to have the reference so you know where your shading is going. And like I said, if I marked it, it doesn't matter if I've dropped it because I know I've marked it there. And yeah, so all I'm gonna do is to actually just take a little bit of tape here and just stick it back up there. Again, when you're sticking your paper onto your other paper, it's important you just, you like a really light coat 
right, of spray adhesive. You don't need a heavy, heavy coat. And that's kind of why you'll see stuff like stick, but it's not really meant for re-sticking constantly because um, then you'll leave a big amount of residue behind it. And that's not what we're after. Whew, man, so much explaining already. <laughs> What's up, Stephen Ward? How's it going, man? So again, on the cylinder here, and again, just, just to, you know, for my purposes, I'm gonna do them all at once. If you wanna practice one by one, that's perfectly fine, but it's also possible to do them kind of all at once since we have them all on the same sheet and you're able to, you know, while you're doing one shade, you know, you could kind of knock that shade in across all the shapes and then, you know, move on from there before you go too far. We will be needing the pieces, you know, and so that's kind of why I'm saving them, not only for reference, but maybe we're going to stick them back. And in this case, I do believe we are going to stick them back because of these little shadows. You see, we're going to we're going to paint those little shadows in at the very end and we're going to need to stick this back so that we have our edge there. Whew. On the square, we're going to start with the darkest, uh, the darkest side here. So we're going to go ahead and peel that side off. And again, we don't want it to go anywhere. Just take a little piece of tape. If you've laid enough adhesive that you feel like you can just restick it, go ahead and just restick it on the side, that's fine. And then on the triangle, again, on the darkest side. And these, these are probably the simplest ones, is the, the square and the triangle, even though they have the most sides. Um, they're probably the easiest ones to do because Again, it's just kind of a simple shade across the whole side there. Um, so what's the weather like in Australia today, man? Just let me imagine it at least. <laughs> it's starting to get cold here again. It's just let me at least imagine the warm weather. What is it like, Stephen Ward? Tell me about the good old days. <laughs> I am missing summer so bad, man. Um, okay, and then so for today, uh, we're going to be using... Uh, see, it's easier if we just use transparent medium gray and then we shade it down with some black. The reason I say it's easier is because you guys will have an exact point of reference of where my color is. If I mix up gray, I feel like it could vary. You know, your gray could be different than my gray and so on and so forth. Um, you know, so I feel like the best way to go about this is to actually just start with some transparent medium gray. <laughs> so let me let me grab that from the shelf over here. Let's see if I can reach. Okay. So this is out of their original line, the Createx Airbrush Colors Transparent Medium Gray. Now, again, the reason I say it's probably better we all start with the medium gray um, is so that you have a good point of reference of where you know we're all working with the same gray so if we start with a nice medium gray which you know it's a color that's available from createx you can buy it and it's reducible down with the 4011 which is what we'll be using today some 4011 reducer along with the transparent medium gray and then we're probably going to use a little bit of wicked jet black um, to darken it down at the very end uh, to get our, our darker gray but the transparent medium gray being that it is transparent and once we reduce it it's a lot easier to get a nice soft shadow so let's go ahead and mix them up and then I'll be easier to demonstrate for you the airbrush I'll be using today uh, for the whole exercise will be the GSI Creos uh, PS289. Again, fantastic airbrush. Um, I've been loving this airbrush a little bit, a little bit too much, and I just I want to try some of their other ones and stuff. So 
Yeah, we have a lot of reviews uh, in the pipeline, so all the Skull Squad members know already of all the reviews. Um, and there's more stuff coming. And uh, if you guys wait till the end of the exercise, um, I'll also show you guys uh, the stuff I have already, uh, already here for the upcoming giveaway and the stuff that we're waiting on. Because there's still some stuff that hopefully we're, we're still waiting on. As far as I know, we're waiting on. But anyway, uh, we'll get to all that at the end. And it's really cool, really cool. I can't believe, like, above and beyond, like, kind of makes the last giveaway seem kind of wow. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to do about a one-to-one -one mixture with our medium gray here. And we don't need a whole lot, so I'm not going to do mix up a whole lot. But I'm just going to pour some in. About the same amount of reducer in there. Then we're going to shake it up one-to-one. -one. And we're working at about 20 PSI. So again, just 20 PSI, one-to-one -one mixture reduction, medium gray, and we have, you know, everybody will be on the same, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice medium gray, right? And it's actually tensible if you wanted to add just like a drop of like, no, I, I shouldn't. But if you wanted to like make like a sepia tone, if you had a drop of red, if you had a drop of blue, you know, it, you could get a nice cool tones of gray, but this one's pretty neutral. It's right in the middle. Um, the print that I have is actually kind of like bluey, um, but we're gonna do it in this medium gray here, so. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, another giveaway, Heather. Um, it's, it's actually, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys at the very end. So if you stay to the very end, I'll, I'll make sure to remind me because I might forget, but I'll show you guys what we have and stuff. I'm um, starting with the circle again, being that it's medium gray, you're going to be able to just kind of slowly work it in and you can kind of see, I'm just doing like a half moon around and I'll bring you guys in close on the circle so that you guys can see. Right there. All right, so you can see I'm kind of just doing a half circle around, and then I'm just gonna build it up. Right, you see how it is over here on this one? It's a little bit darker on the bottom. I'm just gonna build it up around all the way past the edge. You see, I'm hitting past that edge there, and then hitting it all the way around. You can see on this, even the edge here is kind of, you know, a little bit lighter on the edge. You know, it's still gray all the way down, but it's a little bit lighter on the edge. So we're going to build it a little bit away from the edge. It's still going to hit the edge, but we're not going to focus on the edge because that's some of the light that's actually bouncing off the surface and, you know, kind of doing its thing. That's kind of hitting the, the, the ball back, you know, so. Just kind of work it around. And again, this is just a good way of just using your nice shadow tone, right? Like a nice, go from far away, make a nice line from far away, right? And all we're doing is kind of working that little, that little line and that little shadow around. And you can see here we have a nice kind of like a bright spot in the middle of our, of our reference. So we're gonna kind of work it in there. And you can see that you can build it up and even the medium gray, if you keep building it up, it'll get pretty dark, right? But I think we're we're right on the money right there. I don't think we need to add any more. I think that's pretty good. Uh, again, over here on the square now, right? We got that, that all finished. We're gonna move over to the square. And again, we have our piece we removed over here. And then we have our, you know, area we're gonna paint. And you can see it's just one uniform color pretty much all the way. So it's all we're gonna do is just kind of make sure we work in a nice, and you wanna build it up, right? Don't just saturate the color right away. 
build up a nice soft tone and kind of learn to train your your hand in a, a way of making sure that it's even i like to kind of lay a, tones going up so hatches going up and then some going sideways to kind of make sure it's nice and even in there right so all we're doing bam let it dry a little bit and we're going to give it just one more pass just to make sure it's nice and dark in there see bam bam <laughs> then we're going to move on to our cylinder all right so we go down here again we have our piece we removed or piece our, we're doing here and obviously you can see we have this nice dark stripe right here, right? And then it kind of shades off and we have a bright point and then we have an edge with just a soft shadow. The shadow here goes all the way to the edge, right? There's no bright spot on the edge here. So we're gonna start by building up our nice shadow going up and down. Just build it all the way past, like past. You see how it doesn't end here? So you go, just go past with it. And that way you make sure it's even all the way down. Build the shadow all the way to the edge. Right? And we're building it up just a little bit of gray at a time. And then we're gonna build it sideways. You see, I'm kind of working it all the way up and going down as I shade. You just train your hand and your eye to kind of produce that shadow going soft. Now at the other end, you see we have that nice soft shadow. So again, just go to the edge and build that shadow there. Boom. Uh, all I'm gonna do is give it a second and then I'm gonna build up our main line, you know, going down. It's a little bit darker, you know, right in the center. So I'm just gonna go right here just a little bit darker nice and straight there you go I think that's pretty good we're gonna move to our triangle and again we have the piece we removed it seems like it's just one uniform color all the way <clears throat> and so that's all we're gonna do is just fill it in all the way Nice and easy. And that's why I say the cylinder and the circle are probably harder than the triangle and the square. This, you could just build up a nice even tone in there, a nice dark, you know, gray tone, and you're gonna be good. Give it a second to dry, you know, and then we're gonna go back and just give it a nice pass to even it out, make sure it's nice and Nice and flat. Bam. Nothing too crazy. And then we could remove our next set of pieces. So obviously with the circle, if you're happy with it, if you don't think you need to darken any of it up, I think my edge here, maybe could use a little bit of a pass here. Um, so just darken it a little bit. Again, the, the medium gray, even though it's it's kind of a medium color, it is a color you can build up and make it pretty dark if you keep layering it in. And it's actually like a, it, it's in the me, it's a medium gray, like you know, so it can get pretty dark. It's pretty neutral. Um, yeah. So coming over here to our square, we're gonna remove the next big piece here. Now we don't want any of the spray that we're going to spray here to darken any of our tone that we've already laid, right? So we're going to keep this one here, but we're just going to put our <clears throat> original piece we removed and we're going to lay it back in there. 
So make sure you lay it just perfect. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a piece of tape, stick this one back up there. Again, we're gonna need it. Now, if you've gotten some overspray like this, right? Um, that's why I recommend you have it another one. Or if you have the image on your phone, that way you can zoom in on it and do all that good jazz. <clears throat> so yeah, we have our piece we removed in our open area and then we've covered up the other area here. And then on this side, you could see that it's, it's kind of an even tone, but then we have a little bit of more extra darkness um, here on this corner, just a little bit of a extra shadow here on this left bottom corner. So that's what we're gonna do. Just starting at the bottom here, we're gonna kind of start bringing in a shade all the way across. Don't worry about hitting the edges, go past the edges. Nice, even, smooth shade. Right, we're gonna let it dry for a sec. Make sure it's not too saturated. And then we're just gonna darken up that corner just a little bit. There you go, a little bit. Make sure you got the, the tones you want, right? Make sure it's even. There you go. We're gonna move on to our cylinder. We're gonna do the top of the cylinder here. And again, you see I've gotten overspray over this, so it's hard to tell really on this uh, what we need to do, but it's pretty simple. We just need to shade in. A little bit off the top here and a little bit here and just kind of even it out a little bit so we're just gonna go around just build up a nice shadowy tone off the top and bring it down and kind of across to this corner here there you go nothing too too complicated but again if, if you, know, you want to take your little time and um, Kind of build up that gray a little bit. Again, when you're working the medium gray, it's, it's really easy to get a nice light tone and then you can build it up <clears throat> to a darker gray. And then our triangle. And our triangle, this next piece is pretty much the same as the, the square. It's pretty even all the way across, except it has a little bit extra darkness here on this bottom left corner here. So on here, we're gonna go ahead and hit that. <clears throat> so take that on off. Put this one back. pieces back real quick. The cylinder top. <clears throat> there you go. So again, just nice and even. Not as dark as the other tone, right? We're gonna build it up going down. Nice and even tone, and then just kind of darken up that corner a little bit, and bring it up. And you're gonna have to trust yourself that you're not making it as dark as this side, right? Again, this sh this side should be pretty light. You build it up nice and easy. You don't need to make it too crazy. Um, and then on this side, it should have been darker. You should have gone a little darker. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we've both done it right if you've gotten this far. So I'm just going to take one last piece here. Letting that dry a little bit just so I can just put my piece right back in place. All right, just like that. And then our square is the only piece that has three pieces. So... We're going to lay the other part back that we took off. Then we 
make it take off the top. again this this one again on your reference and on here it's it's pretty even and it just has a little bit extra a little bit extra darkness on just the top all right so just nice and even tone all the way across really lightly and then just a little bit extra darkness across the top and this the Creos here has a 0.3 millimeter needle so you're able to get such a really fine spray and when the paint's reduced this much, I mean, like I said, you really got to build it up to get it dark. So make sure it's just an extra little dark on the top and build your nice shadow coming towards the, towards the front and make sure you bring it all the way to the edge. No, don't leave no white highlight behind, you know, it's not really necessary. You know, lay our piece back in. And here comes the fun part. Back in there, and then we could zoom out. Get you in here. And we're gonna take off the surrounding paper. tape's just like, I'm going to bring all the tape with me. Hold on, hold on. I need to leave some tape behind so it holds the, the actual paper we're working on in place. Otherwise, it's just going to fall. There you go. So we're going to take off the whole paper, um, you know, that the print is on. And leave behind our shapes. We're going to execute our final little shadows coming off. And then we can unmask and see our whole project. Right? So make sure those are stuck in there. And you see our little shadows here at the bottom. Now we're going to start by building a mop with a little bit of gray here. All right, so the circle has just a little circle shadow here. If you want to cut it out, and kind of do it that way you can I kind of want to keep a nice soft edge on it so I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of gray just a little shadow coming off same thing with the square and kind of have it going a little bit around this way and then a little bit off this way to the side to the right right Nothing too crazy Cylinder almost looks the same as the circle. Boom. And triangle. <clears throat> right. And now these little end shadows here have a little bit extra darkness on them. So all I'm gonna do is with the little gray that's left in here, all I'm gonna do is add just one drop, just one, literally one drop of the Wicked Jet Black in there. I'm gonna shake it up. Uh, oh, what's up, er Todd? How's it going? <laughs> What's up, 50 Nuts? How's it going? Hola, hola. Oh, yeah, if you haven't seen, too, I started a Spanish airbrush channel, and I've been kind of transferring the Spanish videos over to there um, just so that we could kind of have a, a nice dedicated place for all the Spanish without getting it all so confused. All right, so now we got a nice even spray, a nice good spray. And all I'm gonna do is just darken in the edge with a little bit of this black mixture here, black and gray. Just a little bit there on the edge. 
really nice and fine. And you'll notice it blends in really good with the gray. You just have to just kind of feather it in. There you go. Now we can remove our pieces. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Mm. And we have our shapes. There you go. That we're putting the masks back in place. So I'm just gonna hit that back again. A little bit of that blackness. There you go. <laughs> Easy enough. And hopefully that helps you guys okay. <laughs> So there you go. Um, hopefully you guys had fun that uh, exercise. Hopefully it helps you guys out. Um, obviously if you want to play around with it, if you want to actually just, once you've done it using the reference, but then if you want to maybe switch um, the light surface, the angle, and just kind of try to play with the shadows a little bit, you can. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much the exercise on the shapes right there. Um, and before I go, let me show you guys again what we have coming up for the giveaway. So let me just move this to the side here. Uh, put this over here. All right, let me get this off of here and let me show you guys what we have so far. Okay, so obviously Createx just uh, did their whole thing with the Wicked Colors um, and we wanted to do a giveaway. We reached out to them and uh, they, <laughs> I asked, like, can we get one of those uh, paint sets, you know, to give away? Um, and what they sent over was this. They said, no, you can't have one. You, what happens is you could have two. So these are the, actually the new Wicked Opaque sets. So it's w Wicked Opaque Lime Light Green. Um, I can't read the blue here, but it's a you know it's basically a whole primary color set, and it's in the Wicked line. And this is awesome because if you want to get into like automotive stuff and all that, you know this uh, paint set is going to be sick, um, right? And to go along with that, they've thrown in a eight ounce. Um, reducer here 4011 uh, to go along with the paint so that's what createx has given us two of these all right so we're having two prizes this time around um, that's that well they also sent a nice sticker pack and a okay the sticker pack is only for one only for one of the prizes and then we have two Two of these so each sticker pack will get a, a exclusive like this is a, a really nice uh, createx sticker it's kind of like uh like metallic -y and stuff it's it's like nice um so you'll get that and then spray gunner uh we have their like spray gunner uh no name brand compressor the handheld compressor and one of their little starter airbrush kits um and not just one of the compressors but two so one prize will have the airbrush and then the other prize will only have the compressor um, yeah that's just the way it's gonna go so not both the prizes will be the same and that's kind of how we're playing it right now um, also throwing in along with all this 
is uh, stencils. So hold on a second, let me see if I can get this over here. Okay, so here we have one whole set of the Mike's brush stencils. So all 10 of them. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do that yet. Um, I think I'm going to split them right like five and five like five to one package and five to the other giveaway package but to go along with those I have a set of the new airbrush stencils uh, which are not out yet which will be out in the next coming weeks um, probably you know right to align everything up with the giveaway um, so we're going to give away some of those as well uh, so all together it's going to be a lot of stuff. And uh, one thing we're waiting on, too, um, is I want, like, I always, like in the last giveaway, right, I threw in a, a, some of my paintings. I wanted to throw in some inspiration for the winners. Um, so I kind of reached out. I didn't want to just keep throwing my own artwork in there. So I reached out. I feel like I got to put this this way so I could talk. I reached out to um, Steve Leahy, 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 I don't know how you say it, Steve Leahy, Leahy, I don't know, I feel like I'm saying it wrong, uh, let me know in the comments how you say it, anyway, I reached out to him and asked him if he wanted to be a part of the giveaway, I know he's been wanting to grow like his YouTube channel and stuff a lot, so part of the giveaway is obviously going to be going and joining and subscribing to him, um, but he agreed to send some stuff over we don't know what yet um, but hopefully we'll get that in soon he's kind of been on a vacation and he's had some bad news and stuff happening we're just kind of let him do his thing and then you know hopefully we hear back from him soon uh, we already confirmed with him he was just on vacation so hopefully we get um, get him all involved like you know get him all set up here so we could get all the giveaway stuff set up once we have it all set up, um, yeah, then we could kind of get everything rolling, make the video, and get everything going. But like I said, two of the new Wicked Opac sets, reducer to go with them, two of the handheld compressors, one of the sets is going to have an airbrush included, a stencil pack, stickers. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're going to have lots and lots of stuff uh, to give away, way bigger than last time. Two winners so two grand prize winners uh which will be really good so if you want your opportunity for that make sure you stay tuned make sure you're subscribed um and yeah it should be in the next week or so i shouldn't think it'll take that long um but anyway if you guys uh are interested in that in the new wicked uh opaque sets and this color right here is a very interesting color uh for the wicked line um it's wicked opaque limelight green it comes in the set um, and yeah it's it's a very nice green not gonna lie <laughs> and knowing that it's like automotive grade pigment you can spray this on a vehicle um, very nice um, but yeah if you want to get your hands on some of this paint try it out for yourself um, I'm obviously gonna have some videos coming up using this paint um, and it's like a how to airbrush fire video um, because you guys already know a lot of this process is laying white, then red, then white. Well, maybe if we had some really nice opaque, wicked paints, we wouldn't have to lay all the white and the red. Maybe it's a whole different process. And we'll be having some videos um, using all that stuff. Again, the videos for the new stencils will be dropping very soon. Um, Got to get those all shot up and done up. Um, I have all the intros done, but I actually have to do the artwork and all that for those. Um, and then get the website already on the back end for that too and then hopefully you guys could get your hands on some of those by ordering some of those um, appreciate all the support again if you've been ordering stencils i've been like that's been taking up my mornings now i just come drink some coffees start running the machine have some pen stencils done and go to the post office like every day um, you know there's at least one or two orders so i really 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 appreciate that that's really been helping a lot through here um, behind the scenes today too I don't know if I let's see if I can show we have the bug we're working on right now um, and if you can see the floor let me see if I can tilt you down 
There you go. The floor is completely covered in pink um, residue because they somebody spray painted this car thinking they were, you know, Mr. Painter something or other. And um, yeah, so I'm the guy that's going to fix it. And yeah, it probably won't make the channel, but it'll make social media and it's going to be a nice little beetle. Um, it won't really have that much artwork or any of that, but <sighs> anyway, guys, um, I'll take up any more of your time. Watch out for the video, of the giveaway coming soon. Um, and yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys, all the guys in the Skull Squad that dropped by today. We had Stephen Ward, we had Air Todd, Go Kid, uh, Fifty Nuts, uh, Jesus Maldonado. How's it going? Um, Stephen Ward, and yeah, that I think that's everybody. Is that Heather? Did I say Heather? I feel like I have to say Heather again. I'm going to say a fifth time, Heather. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys all for watching. The video, again, for the giveaway should be coming up here in the next week or so. And, um, yeah, I wish you guys all the best of luck. Again, I have to do it as a giveaway. Everybody has to be involved because I, I can't charge to enter. That's a raffle. That's a whole different thing. And I can't, I don't, like, yeah, special license and all this. But so if I just make it free, everybody could join. And you never know who could win. It could be the next, you know, Picasso out there just, you know, picking up an airbrush for the first time. Just be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And, yeah, try to get everybody involved. And even if it's you and you don't want the airbrush, but maybe use your airbrush for your little brother, your little sister, and they're going to let them paint with it. That's cool, too. doesn't really matter to me. I'm just trying to get as many people involved with airbrushing as possible. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Createx, for providing this paint for this video, for providing the paint for the giveaway, um, and everything they do for us around here. Uh, shout out to Spray Gunner. Again, if you want to get yourself something nice and you want to help out the channel, go down below in the video. There is some links. You can get yourself something. And using those links provides a kickback for the channel. Not a whole lot. You know, obviously we're not, we're not, we're not affiliated. Like we're not part of Spray Gunner's business, but we do get a little bit of money back, which helps um, provide again, you know, for all the stuff that we do. <sighs> Thank you guys uh, for all the support. We'll see you guys in the next video. Oh my God, I feel like I've been talking forever. Later, guys. Good night. I just stopped.